almost forgot my microphone. You know, I swear, I get here three, four hours before time, beforehand, right? I think I've got everything ready, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, cool, I got everything ready. And what did I do? I literally forgot my microphone. I don't know how I do that exactly, but I have a tendency to do that. Whenever I think I'm ready to go, I can almost guarantee I've forgotten something. Anyway, folks, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thank you for uh, spending this time with me and with one another. It's always, always, always wonderful to be here with you. Um, yeah. So uh, let's see who's here. Let's see. Josh is here. Deb Denny is here. Happy Easter from infinity and beyond, Josh says. And Deb is here from Indiana, United, United States. Steph is here from Sweden. Hello and happy Easter to Ed. Church Without Walls family here. It's already Easter Sunday and changed to summertime. Summer seems to be very far, though. Snow next week again. Ugh. Uh, good to see you all. Press like. Uh, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit the share button. Here in Halifax today. It rained, it snowed, it was sunny, it was cloudy, it snowed again, it was sunny again, it rained a little bit more, it was cloudy a little bit more, it was windy, it was warm, it was cold. It was, every time you looked outside, it was a different, every time you went outside, it was different. Um, I'm hoping we're not going to see too much more snow. I don't know how much more I could take of it, but hey, uh, whatever, whatever may come, may come, right? Um... Let's see, uh, Carol, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Kale Ara, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Happy Easter, happy Easter to you. I'm terribly sorry for butchering your name. And Jessica's here. Uh, hello, everyone from Florida. I've been waiting for this. Good to see you, Jessica. I'm glad you're here. And Kari Burton is here from Kansas. Miriam is here from Texas. And Vetnet says, hey, Duncan, hey, Ava Lynn, and everyone from Michigan. Mama Sita is here. Hello, Mama Sita. Glad to have you. Uh, Amber is here from Maryland. Dana is here. Happy early Easter. Uh, you know, depending on the tradition, sun goes down is when Easter begins. Yeah. Uh, Emergency Remedial Truth says, hey, Rev. Hey, gang. Let's all be fabulous together. Yes, let's be fabulous together. Chris Henderson is here. Hello to everyone out there. Hello to you, Chris. Walt Now Pig is here. Uh, Pig Pig, excuse me. Uh, Hello, everyone. So happy to be with you all. Amen to that. Uh, Sally is here from Ontario. Omar is here from the planet Earth and from other parts unknown. We're never ever certain where those other parts that are unknown are from, but he says it all the time, right? Uh, B. Dell, greetings from Colorado. Good to see you here. And Will Street is Will Street is here. Good evening and happy Easter. Happy Easter to you as well. Awen and Hammer is here. Thank you for all the encouragement this week, Awen and Hammer. It was lovely to get that. Uh, folks, if you happen to ever send me a text message, I don't have a plan that I can respond to you in the States. Um, and it would cost me like eight bucks to send a text message to you if you if you happen to be in the States. Um, so please never take any offense if I, if I don't text you back. Um, let's see... Uh, Michelle is here. Easter blessings to you all. Stephen, I think, uh, I'll thank you some warm, uh, Stefan, excuse me, I'll thank you some warm weather from Florida. Thank you. Uh, and Steve is here from Melbourne, Australia. Hey, Steve. Midnight Man is here. Hello, Duncan. Hello, Ava Lynn. Merry, uh, happy Easter to all. Derry Air is here. Joy and Peace is here. Uh, Fratter Matt is here. Uh, happy Easter Eve. So, Generally speaking, this is the time of day we would have Easter Vigil. And Easter Vigil, of course, is the sun is down, but we're waiting for, you know, we're waiting for for Christ, for Christ to come bursting out of the tomb, right? Before the sun rises. Because at sunrise, it doesn't say he comes out of the tomb. At sunrise, it says the people go to see that he's gone. So it's during the night, at some point during the night that he rises. Charlene is here. Hello, Church Without Walls family. Good to see you, Charlene. I hope everything is going well. Ruth Knox is here. Hello, I lost track of time. That's okay, Ruth. And Kathy is here from is here from Aurelia, Ontario. Kevin Johnson is here. Hello, friends. How are you all? Amen. Swanee, good evening from Saskatchewan. All hello to you in Saskatchewan. 
one of my favorite, favorite, favorite shows. Um, and I'm sure anybody from Saskatchewan gets this all the time. But one of my favorite shows is a Canadian show. It was called Corner Gas. And it took place in Dog River, Saskatchewan. If you ever get a chance to watch it, it is some of the funniest stuff you'll ever see. Uh, it's so cute and it's so charming and it's so just awesome in so in every way. Um, yeah, so if you happen to get a chance to check out Corner Gas, please do. It's a great show. Melody K is here. Happy Easter. And Michael is here. Happy Easter from rainy Southern California. San Diego, exactly. Caught a baseball game in San Diego once. 8 Mick is here. Salutations. Hello to you, 8 Mick. Uh, Art is here. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday weekend. Amen. Um, now, folks, if you happen to have, if you happen to have a prayer request, I would encourage you to post it by with great big capital letters prayer request and that way it's more likely that I'll see it and I'll begin and I'll be and I'll be able to write it down. Jessica Seal Thiel says, I left my violent home situation, been at a hotel for three days. My son just did an Easter egg hunt at the hotel. I have a new apartment to move to this week. I'm stressed, sad, and happy. <sighs> yeah. You're gonna Jessica so this is unsolicited pastoral care, okay? And I apologize if I'm overstepping. You're going to feel it all. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel relief. You're going to feel grief. You're going to feel sorrow. You're going to feel shame. You're going to feel guilt. You're going to feel safety. You're going to feel danger. You're going to feel it all. But you're doing the right thing. Being safe and, and having your, your child safe is the right thing. That's all that matters right now. Nothing, everything else will work itself out in time. All those feelings you're having, it's about being safe. It, there, it, it comes, that you know, these feelings are going to be expensive. But it's about being safe. So God bless you, Jessica. And we will be praying for you and for your little boy. And I think that's awesome that you had a... Uh, I think that's awesome that you had an Easter egg hunt in the hotel. We're having one here at the church tomorrow uh, for our entire neighborhood. And folks, that comes back to me thanking you for that. Um, but we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. And we prepared over 300 eggs. So what we did is we got these little tiny plastic eggs. And I know environmentally it drives me nuts. But it's the only way to to, to even remotely come close to to ensuring that the uh, that the weather and the, and the dampness of the grass doesn't get to them. But uh, we prepared like 300 of these little eggs filled with there's gummy bears and there's chocolates and all kinds of wonderful stuff. So if you happen to be in Halifax tomorrow and you want to come out for an Easter egg hunt, please do. Um, so we'll be praying for Jessica and family. Um, Ad says, hi, Reverend Ed. Evening, everyone. Hi, Ad. Thanks for being here. Mama Sita, happy resurrection weekend. Amen to that. Um, Steph says, hello, Duncan in Scotland and Ava Lynn in Canada from Steph in Sweden. Thanks, Steph. And Dana says, Reverend Ed, excuses, excuses. <laughs> Oof. I see, I see, I see. Um, Vetnet says, I can't stay to chat with everyone. I have to get up early tomorrow. Have a blessed Easter. Vetnet, you too. Take care of yourself. God bless you. Marin is here from Minnesota. Seawolf Blue is here. Happy Easter to all. Amen to that. Julia is here from Michigan. David Smith says, uh, Social Security wants me to go to my mom's benefit to my dad's, go to my, go from my mom's benefit to my dad's benefit. Disabled adult child, please pray that this is easy and I don't have any problems because it is terrifying me. I hear you, man. Bureaucracy can be, is, a, I find it's a terrifying thing. Um, we'll be praying for you and we'll be praying for your, for your benefits, for your disability benefits. 
Uh, Oscar is here from Toronto. Good to see you, Oscar. Hello, greetings. Happy Easter, Reverend Ed, Church Without Walls from Toronto. And Kurt is here. God bless you and your family, Rev. Thank you very much. Yabitz says, Shalom from Georgia. Shalom to you. Uh, Random Englander says some words that I can't pronounce and won't even try. <laughs> uh, hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Joy in Peace says, no matter how hard I try, I tend to forget something until the last minute. I'm awful for it. I can feel so good. Like I got here, like, how did I get here today? Like 4.30, 5 o'clock? So like, it's like four hours ago. Thought I had everything. Right? Thought I had it all. Did not have it all together. Did not have it all together. Jessica says, I'm so blessed. Yes, and that's one of the things to do. Live in an abundance mentality. There's going to be so much work to do. It's going to be really easy to think that the world is, you know, the sky is falling. Live in the abundance mentality. Hey, look at how great this is. Look at how great this is. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. I am blessed. Amen, Jessica. Uh, Art says it's rainy and cold here in Los Angeles. So I'm sorry to hear that. Um, LA, every time I've been to LA, LA, it's been 78 degrees. Just didn't matter when I went. 78 degrees. Mind you, I've never been in there in the summer. Uh, Emily is here. Hello, Reverend Ed. And Brian Fairbanks is here from Leland, North Carolina. Good to see you, Brian. I hope all is well to you in Leland, North Carolina. I am very jealous. Brian, have you ever had turkey barbecue? Oh my gosh. One of the guys on my, on my, uh, when I was a supervisor for Honda, one of the guys on my shift, his, he brought in his grandma's turkey barbecue. My word, it was good. Um, Uh, let's see. Uh, you can always send some snow down to Florida. Rev grin, and it's uh, let's see, Kai, Kyla Ra, Kyla Ra. I, am I pretty Kyla Ra? I'll go with Kyla Ra. Good to see you, Kyla Ra. Thanks for thanks for that. I really do appreciate it. Like if your name's difficult, I really do appreciate it when you can sound it out like that for me. That's wonderful. Uh, Rob Raleigh says my friend John Crowder lives in Leland. That's really cool. Um, Dragon Dancer is here. Oh, by the way, hi, Rob. Good to see you. Uh, Hermit says, Reverend Ed, Duncan, Avalyn, everyone. Amen. Yeah, but it's the Japanese have a saying, a woman's mind and spring weather. We'll let the Japanese have that saying. Um, prayers, Art says, prayers for all tonight. God bless you all. Amen to that. Um, <laughs> Michelle says, Kyla Ra, I'll take some snow too. And Steph echoes what I think many of us are thinking. Jessica, thanks for sharing your news. Uh, I will have you in my prayers. Amen. And David says, also pray that when they transfer me to my mom's benefit, uh, disabled child, disabled adult child, I don't have any problems with the medical stuff. You know, they're always looking to cut people off. Amen, David. We'll be praying for you. Tracy Haverstick is here. Hey, Rev. Uh, happy Easter to all. I want, every time I see that, I want to say Merry Easter. It's my bad. It's nobody else's fault. It's just me. That's how it is. Um, Dana says, well then, where I'm at, happy right on time Easter. Amen. Rock Mumbles, thank you very much for your generosity. Hello, Church Without Walls fan. Peace and love from Idaho. Mm, thank you, Rock. Um, Oscar says, the weather was so nice today. I walked 10,000 steps, read a book. Ugh. I have a new book that I've just started reading, actually. I bought it, like, literally a year ago, last, like, a lit year ago, May, and I've never touched it, and it's, I think it's going to be, I just found it on my bookshelf. I was looking for something else, and I found it on my bookshelf, and I went, this is going to be important. I don't know why. It was just, I picked it up and went, oh, I'm so, I've got to read this. This is going to be important for what you're doing. Can't explain it. That's just the way it is. Uh, Kathy says, hi, all, from Arcadian, from Arcadian. Arcade, New York. Eight Mix says, hi, Contrafax. Hello, Contrafax. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, Dean, greetings from Southwest. Dean says, greetings from Southeast, excuse me, Southeast Manitoba. Glad to join the church with one wall. <laughs> the church with one wall. Okay. Um, N4 says, greetings from Detroit. Good to see you. Mimi is here from Northeastern Illinois. Glenn is here from Ottawa. Your Ottawa atheist in the pews. Glad to have you. I am absolutely glad to have you. 
Um, you know, in, in our church, in our actual congregation, we have people of different faiths who come. It's lovely and wonderful. And honestly, I think it's, a, I think it's really, really, really super important. One gentleman, great guy. He's a Buddhist. Love him. I've met his mom. I've, I've met his family. They're all amazing people. And, uh, and he's so much fun to be around. He and I, we've been very great. I've been very fortunate that we, we, he and I have been able to sit down and have a meal and, and, uh, and share a drink. And he's just amazing. He's just a fantastic guy. Anyhow, good to see you, Glenn. Thanks for being here. Uh, Monica says she's here from Virginia and a happy Easter to all with love. Brown bird, excuse me. Hello and a blessing. Happy. It's a blessing. Happy Easter. Easter. Um, Julia says prayers first, a prayer of gratitude for Peter LaRue's surgery. It went perfectly. Second request is that the doctors will approve him to be well enough to have physiotherapy uh, rather than a nursing home. Mm. So we will pray for Peter's continued recovery. For physical therapy, physiotherapy, excuse me. Donna is here from North Carolina. Lots of people from North Carolina here tonight. That's awesome. And Chris says, good evening, uh, Church Without Walls. Duncan and Ava Lynn, I hope everyone is doing well this weekend. Amen. Random Englander says, uh, Reverend Ed, um, I was wondering, since we've talked about praying for praying for God and asking saints to pray with us, I was wondering, what do you think about praying for the saints? I think it's lovely. I, I do. I, I think it's absolutely lovely. We can pray thanks. We can, we can pray, you know, a prayer of thanks for, for all, for their lives. We can pray a prayer of blessing for them. You know, again, and, and maybe it's something that we should, like we have talked about prayer in different contexts and, and maybe that's something that we should be thinking more often about is whereas Paul talks about this great cloud of witnesses that are, that's, that surrounds us. We should be praying for the, for, for them because it solidifies within ourselves. I think the understanding that we don't die like for a Christian, there's no death. There's no death. We don't, we don't ever die. We don't ever cease to be. And so if we don't ever cease to be, then yes, I should be able to pray for Francis and for Claire and, and I should be able to pray for Mary and I should be able to Mary and Mary and Mary. Like there's like 50 of them, you know, I should be able to pray for them all. And, and, and I should be able to ask them to, to pray for me and to pray for my family and for the things that are going on in this world. Not that they have any magical powers, but their prayers matter like yours do. Maybe, maybe we need to get back into the habit of praying for the deceased and praying for those who have gone on before us again, so that it builds within us the, the recognition, the practiced recognition that ain't nobody dies a Christian. We don't ever have to say goodbye to a Christian. We just say, I'll see you later. Um... Let's see. Tracy says, I love learning from you. Tracy, I'm so glad to have you here. Thanks so much for being here. Um, Jessica says, thanks, everyone. It's been so hard and I'm so ready to feel safe. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, Hani, sunrise services in the Garden of the Gods in Colorado Springs is my favorite, is my all-time favorite. I've, I've, I've never even heard of it. That sounds gorgeous. Olivia is here. And then it jumped way down to the bottom on me. So uh, I'm just going to be praying for, let's see, prayer request. Let us be helpful and take care of those untold prayers for the unspoken prayers. Amen, Steph. The unseen healers. We'll be praying for the unspoken prayers and for the unseen healers. Uh, Kurt says, what's the symbolism of the Easter bunny and the Easter egg? They are pagan symbols that Christians appropriated. <laughs> um, the, the, it, they're, they're signs of, of um, they're, they're signs of, 
of birth, of of um, of of you know, an egg is a sign of a, of of coming birth of 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 new life. That's what they're they're signs of new life. Maybe the rabbit is you know continuous all the time. Birth the way you know rabbits sort of the way rabbits breed. They're not they they were not originally Christian symbols. Uh, they were not originally Christian symbols. They were, uh, they were pagan symbols that Christians went. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, uh, but thanks for asking, Kurt. And a prayer request from Sea Wolf Blue. Please say a prayer for my grandchildren, cousins um, Maya and Kobe, who were roommates but have had to had a disagreement. Pray for the whole family to get through this and heal. Mm. So we will be praying for uh, Maya and Kobe. Tough to live with friends. It's tough to live with friends. It's tough to live with family. So we will definitely be praying for you and your family. We will be praying for you and your family. Uh, Dragon Dancer says, we had a two alarm fire here in our town yesterday nobody was seriously injured but the occupants of the five apartment house are now without their homes uh pray they find new homes those displaced by fire and tragedy we'll be praying Jessica says, thank you all. I've been learning, leaning heavily on God and St. Michael. I like St. Michael. I like God too. I like St. Michael. Uh, coming to terms with my abuse was hard, but once I realized I needed to protect my children, it was an easy decision. Amen. Jessica is here from Philadelphia, wishing everyone a blessed Easter. Thank you, Jessica. Good to see you. Um, Walt Now Pig says, uh, I love Easter. I love Easter bread. A food shout out is required for attendance here. Yeah. Um, I've already had somebody sent me something about food today and I've been uh, crave. We've been cooking. I haven't been. Um, uh, our resident baker made 55 dozen hot cross buns this week for the church. She received 110 orders. We sell them in half dozen orders. She received 110 orders. 55 dozen hot cross buns is what she made. I didn't do the math on it, but that's what? 500, 55 times 12, 55 times 10 is 550. Two times 55 is 110. So that's, uh, what, six, 600, 600 some odd. <whistles> Anyhow math isn't my math isn't good tonight um sabrina is here sabrina good to see you you and i need to have a wonderful conversation at some point very very soon there's actually more than a few of you that i need to reach out <clears throat> excuse me that i need to reach out to this week uh kevin is here prayer request for a friend and co-worker who lost a husband out of the blue oh kevin's friend and co-worker We will be praying for them. Uh, I had to write my first, it's not a report card, what do you call it? My first evaluation, my first student evaluation this weekend. And thankfully it was easy because the guy's awesome. We have a, a student minister here in our church and he's awesome and it was really quite easy to do it. Um, but that brings another prayer, uh, another thought for a prayer up. Let's pray for all those who are just, who are discerning God's call to ministry. Whatever that ministry may be, prayer request from Amber. Pray for Maryland as we had a horrible bridge collapse in Baltimore. People are still missing, so pray that they bring them home. Oh, for those. Hmm. 
I heard somewhere this week that it could take like a long, long time to open up, to open up that, uh, that seaway. Whew. Huge tragedy. Uh, Steve, prayer of thanks for some recent good fortune. Well, God bless you, Steve. And thank you very much for your, thank you very much for your generosity. Thank you very much for your generosity. And it says, let's pray, let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Yay, your first super on a live stream, Steve. Congratulations. Uh, Mr. Rorosuri says, silent Saturday, everyone. Mm, yeah, I'm not good at, I was once years ago, I was once asked to do a, um, a silent retreat. I was asked to do a silent retreat for a group in our diocese called the Anglican Church Women. And I was meant to go in and it was supposed to be meditative, it was supposed to be prayerful, and it was supposed to be all of that stuff. And I had two people with me and they did their part. And I got up and did my part. And it did not come across as silent at all. As a matter of fact, it was not silent. It was anything but silent. Um, they were very gracious and thanked me. <laughs> they were very gracious and thanked me. Uh, and they asked me to go back the next year. So that's cool. But I, I'm, I'm not great silent. I don't, I don't do silent terribly well. Uh, Deb says, my favorite Canadian type show is Do South. Do South was good. Yep. Uh, prayer request from Walt now. Please pray. Please offer prayers for my wife and our oldest son's serious heart conditions. Hmm. Walt now's wife and son's heart conditions. We'll pray. For sure. Uh, David says, please pray for me. I have been terrified about this transfer because I'm autistic. Uh, they know I'm autistic. I shouldn't have to go through this all over again. It's not easy. It's not easy for anybody, regardless of your condition. Um, dealing with paperwork, uh, dealing with paperwork is especially troubling because there's always the opportunity that they may say no. And None of us like being told no. And sometimes the questions we ask, ask are so deeply important that a no would be, would be catastrophic. So David, we will be praying for you and we'll be praying for this transfer of, of your disability benefits and we'll be praying that it goes well and it goes easy and we will be praying that you, you have all the support you need within government to make this happen and that all they want to do when everything is said and done that you you receive even more than you expect that you get all like so much more help so much more support so many more opportunities than 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 you can even you can even imagine sally says i'm praying for jessica amen to that uh, mary posa is here from pittsburgh good to see you mary posa bad week with the stomach flu. I'm terribly sorry to hear that. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, I hope you're feeling better. Um, James is here. Howdy, folks. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, let's see. Dorcas says, uh, hello, everyone. Prayer request. My husband, Ken, had a bad fall in the nursing home. Um, spent a day in the ER. He is in serious pain. Smashed his face. Ugh. Ouch. So we're going to be praying for Ken for his recovery from a fall. And we're going to be praying for Dorcas and her concern. Thank you, Dorcas, for sharing that with us. DR Smith says, hello, Ed and Church Without Walls. It's been a while. It's been a minute, man. It's been a minute. God bless prayers for the neurodivergent. Amen. Um, 
So there's, you know, tonight we're going to, we're going to be talking. We're going to be, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. Uh, one I think is going to be kind of exciting because it's Easter and I might, I'm going to be approaching Easter in a little bit, maybe in a little bit of a different way, but in a good way. I may actually even preach on this tomorrow, to be honest. Not that I want you to stay away from my service tomorrow. And if you're looking for a Sunday morning service, Facebook, St. Margaret of Scotland, Halifax, and you can see our page and we put all of our services out there online for you to check out at your leisure. You can be there with us live or you can you can come back and, and check it out after it's been recorded. Um, and one I'm going to talk about because it's something that I saw and it's something that really annoys me. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we got a couple of things tonight and, and, you know, we'll talk about the different things that you have coming up. I am going to try to stay within the con within the time frame that we normally that I normally allow, which means by about ten thirty we're going to try to get out of here, uh, simply because tomorrow is going to be a big day in the church, um, and uh, and I need to be rested up for that. But Miriam says a prayer request: several people fired from work, added stress and pressure to those left to run the store. Pray for pray for understanding and new hires. Well, for those fired, those hired, those who remain, may God bless you all. May God bless you all. Um... Kevin says, yes, your church service is wonderful on Sunday mornings. Love joining in. I'll be there. Good. To see. That's awesome. Fantastic. Susan says, my daughter is trans. That's cool. I think I might be jumping into the middle of a conversation, but I, I'm glad. And I'm, I'm really, uh, what do I say? Thank you. Thank you for being willing to tell us because it says something about you as well. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, Michelle, uh, reading all the prayers and lifting them up. Amen. Thank you very much, Michelle, for your, thank you very much, Michelle, for your, uh, for your generosity. Emergency Remedial Truth says, I don't want heaven or hell if I can't opt out of any kind of eternal conscious existence. I'm going to be really pissed off forever. Oh, uh, I don't know why that, maybe I'm tired, but that struck me really funny. I really appreciate that emergency re remedial truth. No, I don't know if you're trying to be funny or not, but from knowing you the way I do, I think you might be. Um, Robert is here. General symbolic story of the death of the sun on a cross, the constellation of the Southern Cross and his rebirth. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to look for, uh, I'm going to be looking for prayer requests and, oh, there's some more super chats. Um, Contrafacts, thank you very much for your generosity. Use it as you see fit. Helping people is good uh, for all, for what ails. It does indeed, right? Kathy says, did I understand Reverend Ed to say Christians don't have to say goodbye to other Christians when they pass because they'll see each other in heaven? Are non-Christians SOL? No, non-Christians aren't SOL, but Christians believe in the eternal life others may not so i'm not saying i'm not saying that no i see what, yeah then no that's not what i mean what i'm simply saying is whatever your belief is is whatever you believe for a christian i don't have to say goodbye to kathy like so for example kathy if something were to happen i don't have to say goodbye to you i say i see you later right because that's what i believe i believe i will see you in heaven and and not just other christians no my personal belief is that that um, Jesus died once for all. Um, and that, you know, coming back to what Emergency Remedial Truth says, well, it's a whole thing. I think I did a video on it a while back, but no. Kathy, Christians, I believe that Christians don't have to say goodbye to anybody. I believe that Christians just have to say, they, we get to say, I'll see you later. I hope that clears it up. And I'm sorry for any, 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 uh, any misunderstanding. Um, let's see. I am looking for prayer requests. Um, let's see. Rowan lady. Hi, Father Ed. Just celebrated Easter vigil in Wales. Good to see you. 
um, sang, Thine be the glory, feeling totally uplifted in my spirit. Hallelujah. That's awesome, Rowan Lady. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. God bless you as you celebrate your Easter vigil. And for what it's worth, I think in like in the next two years, I'm supposed to, I might even have a chance to go to Wales sailing. So fingers crossed, right? Um, please, I hope I never have to pronounce any of the names of towns over there. But yeah. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Prayer request from Dragon Dancer. There was a two alarm fire in our town. Uh, pray for shelter this weekend. Amen to that. Um, Mercury Wells, I really need God to help me rediscover some purpose in life. I'm recovering from a drug addiction and I need something to look to work towards. Please help. Mercury Wells, what I will tell you to do is my emails in the description of this video. Send me an email and let's get together and talk. That's a that's a big conversation that I would love to have with you. And if and if I'm not your cup of tea, we have another online pastoral care uh, associate who who could speak to you as well. All right. So depending on who you are and what you're going through and what your preferences are, um, we we can help. And and this is all of course this is all free of charge. So however I can help, I am glad to help. Um, every all of us, all of us need. Our benefit. All of us benefit from knowing um, the purpose that we serve in this life. And when we have purpose, we can get through just about anything. So good for you uh, for looking for your purpose. God bless you in this. And if I can be of assistance, please let, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, Jessica says, I wish I had the energy to respond to specific prayer requests, but all I can do is wish the best, uh, most healthy blessings for all here and those who aren't here. I have an abundance of love for us all. Amen. Thank you, Jessica. That's all we have to do. That is absolutely all we have to do. Let's see. Um, Emergency Remedial Truth says Jesus calls us to holiness. Holiness is dedication to a sacred purpose. If you follow Jesus, you should be dedicated to the sacred pur to sacred purpose all the time. And that sacred purpose, I believe, is to love. Um, it's not complicated. It's not easy, but it's not complicated. Um, Uh, Just Luna says, prayer request for myself and everyone else who struggles with addiction. I also want to add that I'm not giving up. I encourage all also not to give up. My heart, may God bless you. So we're going to pray for Just Luna. And we're going to pray for, um, for our friend Mercury Wells. in your continued recoveries from addiction and for all those who are suffering addiction. Thank you, Jess Luna. Um, and thank you, Mercury Wells, for, for being brave enough to share that with us. Um, and Alwyn and Hammer is saying that their hammer is going to ring out tonight in prayer for you. He, he means it. It's awesome it's absolutely awesome uh, I love how you all pray for each other uh, let's see Contrafax prayer request please pray that I could discern something for peace it has been noisy in my head as of late Contrafax why don't you drop me a line let's talk someday it's been a long it's been a minute since we've talked right so Contrafax send me send me a message and let's let's have a chat Uh, Robert Cummins says the Egyptians hung decorated eggs in the temple and the Romans used decorated eggs in processions honoring the mother goddess. Is that right? I really need to, to do a little more research and uh, get to the get to the deeper stuff sometimes, right? Vicky M says prayer request. Amen, Vicky. 
And Dr. Smith, pray, prayer request for the neurodivergent. One in five are autistic, have ADHD, OCD, Down syndrome, dyslexic, um, dyspraxia, um, synth, I, I can't pronounce the next word, et cetera, as high as 30% of the population. We're on a spectrum. Honestly, I, I would guess it's much higher than 30%. Just me. I would guess it's much higher than 30%. I think, I think most of us, I literally believe that most of us are on the spectrum somewhere. And it's probably not like a, a single spectrum. It's more like a cone. And we exist in this 3D, this three-dimensional spectrum at some point. Yabit yeah, says 55 times 12 is 660. Okay. That sounds about right. Yep. Uh, Emergency Remedial Truth says price of eggs right now, painting any and hiding them is expensive, is an expensive risk. Amen. Well, we, we're, like I said, we're doing this tomorrow for the entire neighborhood. So we've got 300 and some odd eggs ready to go. Uh, they put them together today and we'll hide them tomorrow uh, after after church and and let kids from the neighborhood go and, and find them. Coley Blee Flyer says, prayer request, please, for the six workers who perished uh, in the Baltimore Bridge collapse. May their families find peace and consolation during these hard, sad times. Thank you. Amen. Uh, random England, a prayer request. I'd like to ask for prayers for England and Wales environment. Our water is privately owned and companies have a habit of dumping raw sewage into bodies of water. Hmm. So for, yeah. In England and Wales. We'll be praying. Sally has a prayer request. Prayer for my second Easter without my son, Matthew. And this is worse than the first year. The first was pure shock, but now the loss has settled in fully and I'll be alone. Hmm. We'll be praying for you. We'll be praying for you, Sally. God bless you. I completely understand where you're coming from. I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, Leslie says, prayer for my 15-year-old uh, grandnephew. Flying as an unaccompanied minor tomorrow. Flying back home after a week-long visit on his spring break. That's lovely that he came to visit you for spring break. So for Leslie's grand nephew who's returning home. Amen. Steve says, isn't it more that the Romans adapted their pagan festivals to Christian events? I don't know. I don't I don't think so. I, I like if you if you look at like the, the solstice, Christians went, hey, this is a this is a nice holiday. We don't celebrate Jesus' birth. Maybe we could celebrate Jesus' birth for this. We, we sort of appropriated things, but it, it's entirely possible it goes the other way. It's also entirely possible that there was some just um, crossover as as people became Christians, they brought with them their festivals and their symbols. Uh, they found they found relevancy uh, of their with their old symbols in this new faith. You know, it's, I'm I'm not saying it's like we did it out of malice and 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 ill forethought. It's just um, anyhow. <laughs> that's a that's a whole thing. That's a whole thing. Um, Prayer request from Allison, please pray for my dad as he has a medication being suspended in a couple of months due to the due to the drug company not wanting to make it anymore. May we find a new med uh, that is restored. We'll be praying for your dad, Allison, for sure. That's the word fertility. Uh, Denny says the rabbit and the egg are for fertility and good harvest. Uh, Nate says, prayer for those Christians that are trying to come to terms with Biden's proclamation the other day in regards to transgender uh, recognition. 
Hmm. Can we say for Christians struggling in a quickly changing world? Because many are, are finding it difficult adapting to, to the world around them. Many are finding it difficult. To, and that's not to say they're bad people. But if you know you've spent 50 or 60 years being taught something, and now all of a sudden you're, you're challenged. If you spend the last 50 or 60 years being taught something, and now all of a sudden you're challenged with, with a new understanding or a new reality that you have to make sense of, it's, it's, it's normal Right? It's normal to balk at that and it's normal to it's normal to to chafe at it and, it, and it's normal to to, to to have an opposition towards it. Change is difficult. Again, it doesn't mean they're bad. It just means they're struggling. Amen. Um, on that note, on that note, we're going to talk about something because the other couple of weeks ago, um, a couple of weeks ago, we had a, uh, somebody asked the question about change. They asked the question about change and, um, you know, not change, excuse me. A couple of weeks ago, somebody asked the question about asking questions. And they said, you know, I've been told I'm not supposed to ask questions. I've been told that that it's not okay for me to ask questions about God. It's not okay for me to ask questions about, about Jesus. It's not okay for me to ask questions about the church. It's not okay. And by that, I think it was probably, it's not okay for me to challenge, challenge the established, the establishment, challenge the, the established teachings of the church that I'm in or, or challenge my pastor with, with, uh, with a different perspective. I wanted to come back to that because this is Easter obviously, right? We've been saying happy Easter all night, so it's Easter. And Easter is the day, the season, that we remember Jesus being resurrected. Okay? We remember this, the se- this is the season where we remember Jesus being resurrected. And that's a big deal, <laughs> right? Like in the church, that's a huge deal. It is an absolute massive matter of faith and trust. Um, we believe that our Lord rose from the dead. Not that he was resuscitated, that he, from an internal power, rose from the grave, moved the stone that blocked the tomb out of the way, and walked among the people, not as a ghost. Not as a ghost, like Jesus, according to scripture, according to tradition, Jesus was not a ghost, was real. He ate, he drank, he, he spoke, he, he, he touched, he loved his people. He rose from the grave, fully flesh and blown and blood human being. It's a, again, it's a huge matter of faith. But it's so challenging. That concept is so challenging. We've never seen this, at least in my understanding of recorded history. We've never seen a time where somebody rose from the grave three days later after being dead. Never seen that before. There's no scientific equivalency that we can look at and go, oh, yes, well, in certain conditions and certain times when there's a rainbow present and and a unicorn running in the background with a full moon and a high tide, everything works out just like this sometimes. This, This is a big ask of our congregations. We want you to rejoice about something that was only ever seen once and that's never been duplicated and that we really don't fully understand exactly how this all happened in an age of science and skepticism in an age of, of, of research and data and statistics. It's a big ask to say, we want you to believe that Jesus rose from the grave. It's normal and natural and perfectly healthy and reasonable 
and I would argue necessary for us to question at a time like this. And I'm not, no, no, for, for the Christians out there, I'm not saying, what are you telling me you don't believe in the resurrection? I believe in the resurrection. I do. I believe in the resurrection. It is, it is so important to, to my life. It's so important to my faith. But to tell you that I never had a doubt, I would lie. I'd be lying to you. To tell you that I don't doubt, I would be lying to you. I do have my doubts. And for what it's worth, I believe that my doubts are why my faith is as strong as it is. My doubts, I think, is the reason why my faith is as healthy as it is. It's the reason why I'm able to, to, to see my, my faith bend and flex and not shatter. Um, doubt is not the opposite of faith. Certainty is the opposite of faith, right? Certainty where I say, I'm, this is absolutely the way it is, period. That'll, that'll destroy a faith quicker than any question, quicker than any, any inkling of doubt. Certainty will lead to a, an unhealthy, a destructive, and ultimately, I believe, a destroyed faith. Now, the very first book I ever read, the very first book I ever read in seminary was this one, Paul Tillich's The Dynamics of Faith. And it's a great book. Paul Tillich uh, was a uh, Christian psychotherapist, I believe, from Germany. And, uh, and theologian, was he a psychotherapist or am I confusing him with somebody else? Anyway, Paul Tillich, it's a great book. The Dynamics of Faith is a great book. Uh, but in it, one of the first things I ever highlighted in a book, or did I just take it anyway? One of the, one of the first lines in this book that really struck me was when he says, faith without doubt is dead. Faith without doubt is dead dead. You must have doubt in order to have a faith that is alive and relevant and vibrant and growing. A faith that isn't growing, what's the purpose? If you have faith, but it's not leading you closer to God, what's the purpose? If you have faith, but it's not leading to you to a deeper understanding of the divine, what's the purpose? If you have faith, but it, it doesn't lead you into closer relationship with those around you, what's the purpose? If you have faith, but you never have any questions, what's the point? Now, Jesus tells a story. Jesus tells a story um, in, uh, in the Gospel of, of Luke, I believe it is. He tells a story uh, about a guy who he knows he's about to be fired because he's, he's a crook. And so what he does is he goes around to all of his masters, uh, all the people who are indebted to his master, and he makes friends of them all, right? He makes, he makes friends of them all. He tells them, okay, you owe 100, well, you, you only owe 50. And you owe, you owe 75, well, now you only owe 25. And oh, you owe 1,000, well, now you only owe 400, whatever it might be. And, and Jesus applauds him for this. He's like, this guy, this guy, this was smart. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the wrong one. Excuse me, I'm thinking about the wrong one. Jesus at one point tells us, he says uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. Now, doesn't that make perfect sense? Nobody's going to come and open the door unless you knock on it. And if you don't ask a question, how can you ever possibly find new answers? And if you don't, um, and if you're not seeking something, how could you possibly find anything? This makes, this makes perfect sense to me. So again, coming back to it, yes, ask questions. Yes, have doubt. Yes, wonder. Yes, scratch your head. Yes, you know, allow yourself the opportunity to, to be challenged, to let your faith be challenged. I promise it will survive. Your faith will survive being challenged. And if it doesn't, then it means there's some, there's some certainty there that probably needs to be worked on uh, and massaged out. Uh, 
Now, Jesus continues here. He says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, would give him a stone? Which of you, which, or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, how much to give good, know how much to give, excuse me, know how to give, give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give, give good gifts to those of you who ask? So again, it's really, this is really key. Now we look at it from the perspective of, you know, that God's going to give us things, but it's, it's a matter of answers too, isn't it? It's a matter of when we go to God and we say, hey, I'm looking for an answer. I, I, I'm seeking an, an understanding. I, I want something deeper here. Well, God's not going to give us anything trivial or, or trite. The relationship will, 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 will grow and blossom. And remember that that's what this is. That's what faith is. It's supposed to be a relationship between you and the divine. Well, no relationship gets stronger unless you ask questions of your partner. No relationship gets stronger unless you, you generally want to hear about their lives and about their experiences and about their thoughts and their feelings and their hopes and their dreams. And the only way you're going to find that stuff out is if you ask. If you assume you know everything, if you're so certain about who they are and what they're like, then that relationship's doomed to fail. So today, we're going to celebrate remembrance of Jesus resurrecting from the grave. And it's normal for us to, hmm, I wonder about that. Let yourself wonder and ask God about it. Say, hey, listen, what? what? <laughs> you know, how is this possible? And then do what I find difficult to do, which is be quiet. And listen, open your eyes and look around, and be watchful, open your heart to those emotions and those feelings, that intuition. The answer will come or an answer will come and be prepared because that answer will bring with it 55 more questions. And each one of those questions will bring answers. And each one of those answers will bring 55 more questions. Because that's the nature of faith. That's the nature of, of growing closer to God. For those of you out there who are asking questions or, or who are entertaining their doubts. For those of you out there who may say, well, you know what? I'm deconstructing my faith. God bless you. Oh, what an exciting journey. And if there's ever anything I can do to help, please let me know. Amen. Uh, let's see. Miriam, thank you very much for your generosity. Um, for all those going through transitions. Going through transitions. Amen. Aren't we all going through trans transitions of some sort? And a prayer request for Pope Francis. He doesn't look good. Pope Francis is amazing to me. Pope Francis is amazing to me. And you're right. He, he does, he's, he's tired. He looks like he's tired. Um, Gloria says, went to a funeral today. It was sad. Uh, it was said his last breath on earth was followed by his first breath in heaven. And we'll see you later. Yeah. Uh, D.R. Smith says, do other religions say that we do cease to be? Yeah. Um, I'm again, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I studied Christian theology. Um, but my understanding is there are other religions that, that don't believe in an afterlife, uh, that our time here, when it's over, it's over. And, um, you know, not for nothing, but there are Christians who, who, uh, believe that when we die, we, we, we die and we only enter into eternal life when, um, 
we only enter into eternal life on, on the last in the last days. Uh, Jessica says, tonight I got to help teach people how to swim. Some of them didn't know English, but love doesn't need a language. I felt God in that moment. Amen. That's awesome. Olivia says, I've been a member of a United Methodist Church in St. Louis. Part of what they say is to say together the mission statement of the church, part of which says that we will be a church without walls. Well, I think they've been around longer than we have, so... I guess we, they probably didn't steal it from us, did they, Livia? Um, Steph, thank you very much for your generosity. $130 that I hope you can find somewhere to put to good use. Amen. We definitely will. Um, we will definitely put, put that to good use, Steph. Thank you very much. God bless you. Um, let's see. Uh, Contrafax says, I missed your friend. I apologize if I missed that call. I don't think you did miss that call. As a matter of fact, uh, Contrafax, I think I told you she was coming before she was actually coming. So um, she may only be getting there, I think, at the end of like the middle of April or something like that. So thank you very much for the number. I've passed it on and we'll see. Maybe she's able to call. Maybe she's not. But either way, right? Thanks for doing it. Um, prayer request has, um, um, let's see. Sarah has a prayer request. Once again, ex-convict Gypsy Rose Blanchard. She and her husband have separated. We'll be praying for them both. Thank you, Sarah. see i'm just looking for prayer requests here joy and peace says reverend ed thank you for sharing the special services online the last one hit home well i'm i'm really glad and phil says please pray that god blesses me with a soulmate life companion soon in Jesus' name i've been praying for a soulmate life companion for 29 years We'll be praying for you, Phil. Uh, Leslie, thank you very much for your generosity. Woo, woo, woo. God bless you. Thank you for your gift. Josh, continued prayer for Alexa Nicholas, Jeanette McCurdy, Amanda Bynes, and their continued healing from the trauma they suffered at the hands of Dan Schneider during their Nickelodeon days. We'll be praying for them. We will be praying for them. Thank you, Josh. Susan says, oops, I was getting my Easter dinner prepared for tomorrow. I missed a few minutes. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter to you. Thanks for being here. Um, Mary Poses says, thank you all. I think it was the worst stomach flu I've ever had, and I still don't have a, my, st my strength back. Lost three pounds last time I checked. Yikes. Well, I hope you are feeling better, and I hope your strength returns to you soon, Mary Posa. Ethan says, hello, good news. I was just confirmed into the church at, the, at their Easter vigil at the cathedral. Congratulations, Ethan. Congratulations, Ethan. Um, we will be praying for you. Let's see. Steph has a Thanksgiving prayer. For a prayer for Janet on the Isle of Man. I'm so grateful. She's doing so well and are so pleased now. That's fantastic. Sarah says, please, would you pray for my brother-in-law, Dr. Ian Madison, who has uh, cancer for his wife, Dorothy, uh, and for Ian's medical care team. Yeah. So we'll pray for Dr. Ian. Dorothy. And the team. 
we'll be praying for them. And Josh is a prayer request number two. Uh, I live on a busy street and I'm really fed up with drag racing and backfiring cars in my neighborhood. I wanted to stop. Hmm. Peace and quiet in the neighborhood. But peace and quiet in the neighborhood. And Mama Sita, prayer request, I'm an ADDer in this excited, curious, popcorn thinking kind of way. Uh, my son is brilliant in a calm, linear kind of way. So we are neurodivergent opposites that clash. It's been rough. So we're going to pray for Mama Sita. And her son and the relationship. for understanding and for compassion and for appreciation. Mm. Uh, the sun says faith is an interesting word referring to both a set of religious beliefs as well as strength of the individual's belief in that set. Hmm. And, um, Aria says, hi everyone, best news, Jordan is here. She is seven and a half pounds, 20 inches long and absolutely perfect. So we're gonna pray for new Jordan. Um, Kevin says, our pastor starts services with, look at your neighbor and say, may the Jesus I see in you bless me. Oof, that's nice, isn't it? I like that. Um, let's see, let's see. D.R. Smith says, Ed, uh, what do you think of the saying, know thyself and you shall know uh, the universe and its gods? Um, I think it's really important. Um, I don't think any of us have God right, if I could say that. I, I don't think any of us have God right. I don't think any of us truly truly, truly understand the divine. I just, I don't think God's completely knowable. Uh, so knowing who you are, knowing yourself, so know thyself and you shall know the universe and its gods. Um, by knowing yourself, you also know where you are projecting onto God. And when you know what you're projecting onto God, you know what aspects of God are actually you. Um, so I think it's brilliant. I think it's lovely and perfect. Thank you, D.R. Smith. Um, I'm looking, let's see, Joy and Peace says, uh, Reverend Ed, I'm so grateful for a place where we can safely explore our beliefs. While it's uncomfortable at times, and it is uncomfortable at times, it feels more real. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Prophecy of St. Malachi, D.R. Smith says, Prophecy of St. Malachi says, Pope Francis is the last before you know what. Google it. Eh, if it is, it is. I, I, honestly, I'll tell you what, folks, if you're out there and, you're, and you watch me for any period of time, I don't care at all about eschatology. And, and by that, I mean, I, I am not in any way, shape or form studying the end of days. If it happens today, it happens today. If it happens tomorrow, it happens tomorrow. If it happens in a year, it's a year. 10 years, 100 years, 1,000 years. I am not going to spend an ounce of my time at all. I am not going to spend an ounce of my time worrying about the end. Every minute I give to worrying about the end is a minute that I miss in this life right now. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of prophecies out there, a lot of prophecies out there. And, and that's the sad thing about prophecies is that, you know, they're never wrong. Somebody else in, in, in well, such and such, you know, the prophecy of St. Stephen says it's going to be this. So the prophecy of that is going to be that. Maybe it is. And that's not to say, you know, that's not to me telling you, you shouldn't be studying this stuff. Please, if, if you're fascinated by it, study it. 
I just know the way my brain works. And if I get into it, I'd never leave. It'd be a rabbit hole I would never return to, return from, excuse me. So I don't, I don't jump into it at all. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Sally says, because Matthew committed suicide, I've worried that Matthew may not be in heaven. Do you think that he can't be because of this? Uh, absolutely, your your son is in heaven. Um, absolutely. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And I can even tell you in our prayer book, there's a rubric. Uh, rubric is a rule. And the rubric says, paraphrasing it, because it's old English and I'm not going to get into it, but paraphrasing it, the, the rubric, the rule says that I may not celebrate the funeral of someone who committed suicide. I may not commit, I may not celebrate the funeral of someone who committed suicide in their right mind. We, when a person makes that decision, when a person makes that decision, they are in a different place. They are, they are not where you and I may be right now. The pain, the the pain, the desire to have the pain relieved. It's too much. It's too much. They, they make that decision because this is too much. That means we're not well. It means we're going through something that that has, has changed our perspective, has changed, it's it shifted how we see things. We're not well. Your son's in heaven. Because nobody does that kind of thing when they're of their right mind, when they're in that, that healthy place. Your son's in heaven because God is loving and God is empathetic. And because God... God has experienced everything we've experienced. God has experienced it all. And so not only does God love you and love your son, God knows exactly what it was like for, for your son. Your son is in the arms of God. No question about it for me. No question about it. God bless you, Sally. Um, Omar says, does the sayings by Jesus refer back to a time when the God of Israel gave the people snakes and stones unmercifully in what is called the Old Testament? Um, it depends on which, uh, which sayings. There's, there's lots of things that Jesus says that, that Christians will look at the Old Testament and say, oh, you see, that's where Jesus, that's what Jesus meant. And there are lots of times where we point back and go, oh, that's a prophecy for Jesus. Uh, and that's a prophecy for Jesus is coming. And that's a prophecy for Jesus is um, uh, you know, so yes, I guess to answer your question, probably. Yeah. Um, let's see, Mary Poses says, comments are disappearing. I was just reading something non-offensive by D.R. Smith and it disappeared. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Matthew is a great book to read through. I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. Uh, Steve said, need to head off to Easter lunch with my late wife's family. Uh, catch you all next meeting. God bless you. Next week, excuse me. God bless you, Steve. Have fun. And happy Easter. Uh, Steph has a prayer request for Constantine in Uzbekistan. Amen. And we'll be praying for him and his, for his family. Um, let's see, let's see. So I'm just looking for some prayer requests here before I jump into the next, next thing. Um, 
philosopher. So Contrafax says, this guy, Paul Johannes uh, Tillich, was a German American Christian existentialist, philosopher, uh, Christian socialist, and Lutheran theologian, who was one of the most uh, influential theologians. He continues. Okay. Anyhow, uh, yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. He's not a he's not a psychotherapist. I think I'm confused. I think I was confusing him for a second with uh, with Viktor Frankl. Yeah. Olivia says, Father Ed, I respectfully disagree with you on some of the things you're saying about the resurrection of Jesus. Excellent. Disagree with me. I'm perfectly okay with that. And but share that with me. Tell me. Like, I, I, it's only going to help me, right? Only going to help me with my questions and, and, and my understandings. God bless you, Olivia. Um, Steph, with a prayer request for Amy from the Bible study. Amen, Steph. We'll be praying for her. Um, let's see. Emergency Remedial Truth says, Truth remains true. Scratched on a bathroom wall. Don't be surprised that so many faiths have come to similar, similar conclusions about life. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you keeps popping up. Yeah, it's, it's essential, right? So it kind of tells us something. That, that's a really important one. Uh, Cheryl Alt. Okay, so I'm missing part one, but I'll start with part two, Cheryl. Uh, Cheryl says, okay, part two. Wolfgang's surgery is May 15th, so lots of prayers, please. Uh, love all you guys. Hang in there, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Amen, Cheryl. Thank you for that. We'll be praying for you and for Wolfgang and for Justin, and I'm looking for part one. Allison says, please pray for librarians and teachers. We will definitely be praying for librarians and teachers. Um, as they have to fight for their freedom of speech and the right to inquiry. Yeah. May they be protected from attacks. Amen. Um, prayer request for Sarah in Iraq. Amen. I was at Burnt's, so, uh, Steph says, I was at Burnt and Solvay's today when Sarah was on the phone. She hasn't got an easy life down there, so please pray for her and for her brother Emmanuel. Amen. We will. Um, do, 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 do. I am still looking for Cheryl Alt's part one, but I haven't been able to find it yet. Maybe because I'm in the wrong thing here. Hmm. Okay. Omar says, if you want to pick up a check after dinner, Reverend Ed, I won't disagree with you. I love picking up the check. I, I really genuinely do. Troubles me to no end when somebody else can get the check before me. Uh, Jamie says, pray for my granddaughter. She has two loving parents, uh, but they aren't together and they have trouble working out visitations and stuff. We'll be praying. Jamie, will be praying for your family. Um... Family, especially the granddaughter. We'll be praying. Okay. Oh, D Bell, uh, B Dell says, prayer request. I have eye surgery this Wednesday. We'll be praying. Um, Emily has a prayer request. God bless you, Emily. James says, didn't God say not to try and predict the end times? God told us exactly that. Uh, and, and because nobody knows. Jesus tells us nobody knows. I don't even know, he says. Uh, Keith, thank you very much for your generosity uh, and for your gift. That is lovely of you. Folks, if you're wondering, uh, the Super Chats that come in goes to help out with ministries in our community. It does not go in to put a roof on the building or uh, paychecks or anything like that. It goes towards 
ministry out there in the community that we that we get to help people with. Yep. Uh, let's see. Kevin says, Reverend Ed, on your back shelf, I see a brochure of some kind or a book that says Faith Path. What is that? So there's a book back there. It says Secret Path. And that book was written uh, by a couple of guys. And it is about, um, it's about an indigenous boy during the, during the times of Canada's uh, shameful residential schools. And he decided that he was done being at a residential school and he was going to walk home. And um, it's his story of walking home. He escaped the school in, I want to say it was like October. He never made it. Um, but he had to, he had to leave. He, he couldn't stay there any longer. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, 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 am I missing some prayer requests? Random Englander says, no, eschatology isn't for me. I do find the different uh, angel types very interesting though, right? Cherubim, archangel, or rather the archangel or archangels. Yeah, um, I mean, that's and that's all part of it, right? Like I, I'm not... I'm not big into, into the study of angels or demons. Um, not, it's not my, not my thing. Um, anyhow. Um, okay. So we're going to come right back down to the bottom again. Keith, again, thank you very much. Dr. Smith, God bless Ed and Church Without Walls. God bless you, Dr. Smith. And thank you for the comments that kept us, that got us talking and thinking. Uh, Mimi says, Reverend Ed, thank you. Uh, please use as needed. God bless you, Mimi. I really do greatly appreciate it. And you, Dr. Smith, for everybody out there who's, who's able to make a contribution, your charity and your love is amazing. Um, I am incredibly grateful. And if you happen to be out there and you can't, being here, clicking like, clicking subscribe, clicking share, that's great. Adding your comments, being a part of this community, that's excellent and amazing and wonderful. Um, I'll be honest with you, when I first started doing this, we didn't have Super Chats. I didn't know how to do it. And I think it was Derriere says, you have to put Super Chats on there. And so we did. But it's not necessary for me to be doing this. Um, so if you're able to contribute, wonderful. If you're able to help, fantastic. If you're not, be here. Just be here with us. That means more to me than than that means more to me than anything. I really, really, really genuinely love getting to know you folks better all the time. And I think my pen has run out of ink again. No, not quite. Um, let's see. Prayer request for Julie, whose son died one year after his brother. She only has one biological child left. Julie and her grief. We'll pray for her, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, we will be praying for her. Let's see. Cherry Ann got here. I never saw I never saw you walk in, Cherry Ann. Uh, B. Dell says, how do I donate? Anyone? You can donate through Super Chats here. Um, you can um, you donate through Patreon. And you can donate through something called Canada Helps. And I think all those links are in the description of this video. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and Kevin, uh, you know, I'll I'll get it off my shelf there next week. If I took it off right now, half that stuff would fall off. So I'll I'll show you. Oh, 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 oh. But listen, folks, I know some of you out there are always really, really keen on Dingo. Valerie, thank you very much for your generosity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your generosity and for your gift and for being here. Um, I want to show you all something because again, like I said, you, some of you are very, very curious about Dingo and I told you where he got his name. Well, I went out and, um, um, I went out and found the picture. So Dingo is my dog and he may actually be a Dingo. When you see this picture, you might go, wow, he really is a Dingo. Um, he is a, uh, he's a native Texan. Uh, that he was a rescue, a, a rescue dog from Texas. And we got him a couple of years ago, I think in 2000, 2000 and, 2002, 2001, anyhow. Um, and he got his name because the police, a police officer found him on the side of the road. And the police officer thought, wow, he looks like a dingo. And this is a picture of dingo that the police officer took many years ago, like he's four years old, so like four years ago, uh, in the back of the squad car. That's him. Now, those ears are about the same size as they are today. The rest of his head, he just grew into his head. Um, but that's, that's Dingo in the back of a squad car. Uh, and so I, I would argue that he was very, very, very appropriately named, right? I think he was probably very appropriately named. Uh, Emily says, I have a prayer request. I have had a toothache lately. The dentist helped, but still. Oh, I'm sorry, Emily. God bless you. Dana says, Reverend Ed, would you like to go out to, do, to dinner? I love going out to dinner. Yeah, if you folks are ever up here, give me a shout. We'll, we'll go out and and have a coffee, grab a coffee or a dinner or whatever the case is, or we can have you over at our place. That's all always lovely too. Um, Walt now says, the more that physicists know, the more they see design, aka God. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, of seeing God in, in science and mathematics. And um, yeah, just God's everywhere. It's really, it's really cool. Um Let's see. Marvie Marie says, please pray for my brother, Robert. He keeps putting off going to the doctor because of fear. Mm. So we're going to pray that Robert goes to the doctor. We'll be praying for him. We will be praying for him. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing any prayer requests here. Prayer request for Patty, who is probably losing her 87-year-old mother sometime soon. She's hospitalized and has been improving and has now taken a turn for the worst. So we'll pray for Patty and her mom. Amen. Uh, sea Wolf Blue says he does look like a dingo. I know he does look like a dingo. Uh, B Dell says God bless you. Let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. Congratulations on your first super on a live stream. Lovely to have you. Um, he is cute. He is cute. Oh my heart. I'm sorry, Dana. I don't mean to cause your heart any issues. Um, uh, eight mix as well. What? That looks like a dingo, right? Michelle, those ears. Again, Kathy says, oh my God, so cute, so cute. Yep. Uh, Mary Poza, thank you very much for your generosity. I'm out. Happy Easter and love to all. Mary Poza, God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. Folk of the Forest says, prefer Patreon. Uh, they take a smaller percentage out than Google does for Super Chats. Uh, Chanter of the Norse says, The Secret Path, wasn't that the project that Gord Downey was uh, involved in? Yes, it's exactly the project that Gord Downey was involved in. And uh, I, I was going to say a little bit more about it, but I honestly don't remember who the other author was. And so I figured I would share all that next week. Uh, Gord Downey is like a hero of mine. He's 
Gord Downey is the was the lead singer to a band called the Tragically Hip. The Tragically Hip is arguably the greatest Canadian band of all times. Um, their music is amazing. You need to listen to the Tragically Hip. Um, he was the lead singer. He died of a brain tumor uh, not terribly long ago. But when he found out he was um, when he found out that he was terminal, he did a last tour with his with his band. I'll tell you, one of the most beautiful things in his last concert, they actually televised it on national television here. The CBC broadcast it for free because that's how important the Tragically Hip was is to the country. The very beginning of that concert, they're all backstage. The cameras are rolling. And Gord goes up to each person. You know, there's five guys. And he goes up to the other four guys and he kisses them. Now, I don't know, I've never been backstage at a Tragically Hip concert, so I don't know if this is what they've always done. But it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. He kissed each of them, square on the lips, held their faces, and kissed them on the lips. That's not something guys do. And, and please understand, I'm not, I'm just, that's not something that, that guys are used to doing. It's not something that guys grow up learning how to do, being exposed to among your friends. And here Gord was, he was kissing each guy, each friend. And, and you know, the people who were with them, people who worked with them were back there as well. The, 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 the woman who was dressing him, he kissed her on, on the face. Everybody, it was just this really intense, lovely moment. And I've never forgotten it. It's, it's genuinely something that, that I wish, I wish we had that in our lives. You know, I was driving the other day here in Halifax and I saw these two men walking arm in arm up the road together. And I thought, wow, that's, that's lovely. And then I realized it had nothing to do with, nothing, they weren't homosexuals, they weren't gay, it was cultural. In their culture, they walk arm in arm with their friends because they want their friends to know how much they're loved and how much, how precious they are. And they want their friends to, to be close to them. And they don't want their friends to ever think that you're trying to get away from me. No, I want you as close as possible. My God, what a lovely sentiment. If we could have more of that, right? if we were willing to be open emotionally, healthy enough to be open to that kind of of agave touch right that kind of familial safe touch that ex that kind of an expression of love Whew. It's a good world. That is a good world. Um, Danny Kennedy, thank you very much. I know this and all the donations will go far. Amen to that. They will. Uh, and the congregation uh, really appreciates it. And everybody here uh, really appreciates it. Um. Terry says, prayers for God's will be done for best friend with terminal cancer. Uh, Aria says, I love dingo. Animals are wonderful. Amen. Uh, Seawolf, love dingo from Texas. <laughs> That's where he came from. Um Let's see. Again, Mary Poza, thank you for your for your kindness and your generosity. Uh, and everybody, I'm, I apologize for everybody's hearts. That's just, uh, um, <laughs> I didn't mean to, yeah. Uh, and Donna, we have your prayer request. Mercury says, I just feel lost. Uh, I always used alcohol and drugs to numb the pain of my family rejection. I don't know how to deal with my life with no family and no drugs. God bless you. 
if I can help, I mean it. Let us let me know. I'm happy to be there with you as much as I can. Jamie says, I love the idea that a police officer found a wild animal and gave him to a reverend. Well, I, was, I think it was like he was probably two years old when he came to us. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ed says, I love Dingo's ears. Seth says, I can't. The name Dingo reminds me of a line from Cry in the Dark. Amen. Uh, Rebecca says, does he still have such a sweet face? He's a, he's a great dog. He is. He's a, he's a very, very, a very, very good dog. Um, happy Easter from Iraq uh, 111. Thank you very much for your generosity. Let's celebrate their first live, their first super on a live stream. Thank you very much for, for sharing. Uh, Jamie says, sobriety really is like raw dogging life, uh, but it's worth it. It is. And it's painful, right? Because as, and as Mercury says it, it's, we rely on this thing to cope. And when we decide this thing isn't, isn't good for me anymore, we have to learn how to cope. But it's decades. It can be decades of unlearning and all that pain's still there and we got to learn how to deal with it. And, and, and so my, just don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. Right. And, and, uh, Frater Matt says, I think the community is the best part of the 12 step programs. Absolutely. It is essential. It is absolutely essential. Um, Folk of the Forest says, prayers for affordable housing for you and your husband, Lynn. Amen. Sarah says, brotherly love. That said, I never really get into the tragedy of the hips music. Ah, you're the one. <laughs> yeah. I know I missed a bunch of Sea Wolf Blue. Thank you very much for your 10th super on a live stream. And B Dell, thank you again for your generosity. God bless you all. Joy and Peace says, prayer update. Rebecca is out of the hospital from her heart attack. That's wonderful. Well, that is wonderful. Okay, folks. Um, There is, uh, there's one more chat that I want to do. There's one more chat that I want to do, and then we'll, we'll jump into a revised Compline for Easter Vigil. No, I'm not going to do it. I, I'll do that video. I'll do that video in a couple of days. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that video tonight. I'm not going to do that video tonight because I'm having, I'm having too much fun with you, and I do not want to bring this person into it, um, but I'll do this video tomorrow or Monday or something along those lines because it, it does need to be it does need to be done um, but yeah okay so um, let's see God bless you all God bless you all and thank you all for listening to me um, Joy and Peace says Reverend Ed how did it work from your end on getting Dingo from Texas he's a handsome dog he's a he is he's a great dog um, and Deb asked the exact same question. How did, um, Dingo get to you from Texas? So there's a Canadian organization, uh, and I can't remember the group we used, but my daughter who, who is, uh, she had, she got a rescue dog from Louisiana, um, uh, Millie. And, uh, we were looking for a dog. I just said to her, you know, we're going to get a dog. And my daughter, Maya, is definitely on the spectrum, wonderfully on the spectrum, and, and just an incredibly powerful, powerful, strong, beautiful person. I love me to death. Love all my kids. But anyhow, um, within, I don't know, an hour, she sent me uh, a Facebook group. Uh, she sent me the, the, a link to a Facebook group. And they're a Canadian company that works with American shelters, uh, so no-kill shelters in the States, to bring those dogs up, to arrange for homes here in Canada, and then bring the dogs up. And what you have to, 
we had to pay. And what we had to pay for was um, all of his shots. And we had to pay for uh, his vet visit because to bring a dog across the border, you have to have certain paperwork. So we had to pay for all that. And we had to pay for like a couple hundred dollars, I think, for transportation or whatever it happened to be. And so the bottom line is how to, well, I, I contacted this Canadian company who deals with no-kill shelters in the States to bring those animals, um, to bring those animals up here uh, to loving, waiting homes. And he came up, oh, he had to be one of about two or three dozen that came up one night. And he arrived in the middle of a snowstorm and he arrived six hours late. And he and I drove back from, I picked him up in Salisbury, New Brunswick, and we drove back to Halifax that night, which is a two and a half, three and a half hour drive. We got home at four o'clock in the morning and, uh, and the kids were pretty thrilled when they saw him the next morning when they got up. Um, Prayer request from Joy and Peace. Prayer request for physical health and finances. Yeah, we'll pray. Thank you, Joy and Peace, for sharing that with us. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Sabrina, thank you very much for your generosity. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. And Steph, as a prayer request for myself before I leave tonight, have a hard time asking, but can use a prayer. God bless you, Steph. We love you, man. Thanks for being here, and thanks for all that you do for everyone. Now, folks, I'm going to ask you hit like, hit subscribe, hit all those buttons. Uh, that is a great way of helping the channel to grow and helping. And I'm not sure if you've noticed, but for those of you that have been around for a lot, you were seeing, we're seeing, seeing more new faces every week showing up. And that is a really, really lovely, wonderful thing. Um, let's see. Okay, so we're going to jump into, we're going to jump into, um, we're going to jump into Compline. So what I did was I rearranged Compline a little bit. And I added some of the Easter Vigil prayers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kara says, Reverend Ed, I think you might be able to have a whole separate channel just for Dingo alone and maybe the clock too. <laughs> uh, who knows? Another uh, revenue stream for ministry. I'm good with one channel. I don't know how people do multiple channels. I think I do know how they do it. They have a team. They have a, a team of people behind them. Um, Ad has a prayer request. Prayers for the homeless and the lonely and the disabled. Amen. Uh, Kevin Johnson says, there's always room for more people. I love what Sting said. And, I, you know, I've always been a big fan of Sting, the musician. And I remember buying one of his albums my first year of university and being absolutely fascinated, absolutely fascinated by a line. The, only, the, thing about, the crazy thing about congregations is they only get better one by one. I wasn't, I wasn't a churchgoer at that time. I wasn't into God at that time. I certainly wasn't practicing my faith at that time. Right? But that line always, always, always fascinated. The crazy thing about congregations is they only get better one by one. Ah, uh, so yeah, you're right. There's always room for more people here. Amen. Um... Tad says, tell your friends, Reverend Ed is one of the best people on YouTube, even the internet as a whole. Great organization. Well, I'm really grateful. Thank you all for being here. Um, let's jump into, let's jump into Compline. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And Jesus says, Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find your rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, thou God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Into thy hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given to us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth and shine as a light into the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear Lord, yes, let this prayer be true. Grant us this prayer, that your church, the entirety of your church, all of us, all of us who proclaim you, that we would worship you in sincerity and truth and that we would be, that we would shine as a light out into the world leading people to you and to no other. Amen. Lord, keep us as the apple of an eye. Hide us under the shadow of thy wings. Preserve us, O Lord, waking, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church. Exalt in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. It is truly right that with full hearts and minds and voices, we should praise the unseen God, the all-powerful Father and his only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For Christ has ransomed us with his blood and paid for us the price of Adam's sin to our eternal Father. This is our Passover feast when Christ, the true Lamb, is slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of the believers. This is the night when first you saved our forebearers. You freed the people of Israel from their slavery and led them bloodshod through the sea. This is the night when Christians everywhere, washed clean of sin and freed from all defilement, are restored to grace and grow together in holiness. This is the night when Jesus broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Father, how wonderful your care for us. How boundless your merciful love. To ransom a slave, you gave away your son. The power of this night dispels all evil, washes away all guilt, restores all lost innocence, brings mourners joy. Night truly blessed when heaven is wedded to earth. And we are reconciled to God. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, receive our evening sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering. Accept this Easter candle. May it always dispel the darkness of the night. May the morning star which never sets, find its flame still burning. Christ, that morning star who came back from the dead and shed his peaceful light on all creation, 
your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have the heart to cut this prayer out of our service because it always seems to say so much. Lord, on this Easter night, let us be thankful. Let us rejoice. Let us embrace all that the night is and all that the night can be to us. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us, and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. God, the creator, the rock of our salvation, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May he keep us faithful to our calling now and forever. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. Everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you all for sharing. Thank you all for your vulnerability. Thank you for your compassion towards one another. Thank you for your empathy. Thank you for your willingness to, to embrace one another. Thank you all for all you do. I love you. I am so incredibly grateful for you. And I will see you again very, very soon. Numultus.